In the first video, you discovered the basic pieces of equipment in the total diving system. In this video, we'll look at how to use the components of your total diving system. We'll start with the snorkeling system. Begin your snorkeling experience by putting on and adjusting your equipment. Your exposure suit goes on first. When putting on your wetsuit, start with the pants. Adjust the suit around your ankles, then slowly roll it up. Make sure the crotch fits comfortably. When you put on the top, adjust the suit around your wrist one arm at a time and slowly pull it on. The armhole should fit comfortably and there shouldn't be any confinement across the shoulders. Any bulges or pressure spots where the suit is stretched too much may cause discomfort and affect your dive. At this time, place your weight belt around your waist and secure it. Put on your mask and snorkel as described in Section 1. By applying a commercial defogging solution to your mask, it will stay clearer while underwater. Using the Figure 4 method, place your fins on your feet and adjust them so they're snug but not too tight. The Figure 4 method may be performed sitting or standing with the assistance of your buddy. Once your equipment is on and properly adjusted, you're ready to enter the water. The environmental conditions for the area will dictate which entry to use. The controlled seated entry is the easiest method and should be used when conditions permit. When entering off a diving platform, the step in or giant stride entry works best. All you need to do is simply step into the water. When diving from an elevated dock or boat, the feet first entry is generally used. Just keep your legs together so the fins can smooth your entry. If you're entering from the shore under calm conditions, keep your mask in place and carry your fins. Once you and your buddy are in waist deep water, put on your fins, then swim out. In surf, you and your buddy should support each other, and with the fins already on, shuffle backwards or sideways. Once the water is deep enough, turn around and swim out. With any entry, keep enough air in your BC so you can float on the surface. Have your snorkel in place and cover your mask so it isn't lost on impact. This way you'll be able to see, breathe and float the minute you enter the water. As you explore what's beneath the surface, water may occasionally enter your mask. The easiest way to clear your mask is simply to resurface and drain it. The same goes for the snorkel. Many snorkels are equipped with self-draining valves, which aid in clearing. When clearing a snorkel, the popping method works well. A quick, forceful exhalation will cause the water to pop out. There is another method called expansion. As you approach the surface, tilt your head back so that the tube is pointing down. By exhaling a small puff of air on ascent, the air will expand forcing the water out of the snorkel. Fins allow the diver to swim through the water at a relaxed, even pace. By learning various fin kicks, you can switch from one method to another as you tire. The most often used fin kick is a modified swimmer's flutter kick. Keep your legs elongated, kicking from the hips and ankles, not the knees. With the dolphin kick, Keep both legs together while moving in a wave-like motion through the water. Depending on the style of fin you're using, you may need to modify your kick. Consult your SSI instructor about the best kick to use for your style of fin. On the surface, you can turn over and swim on your back. But be sure to watch where you're going or you can lose your direction. In order to explore the beauty below, you must learn to descend below the surface. The weight belt and BC are used to help you descend. If properly weighted, you will sink easily with no air in your BC and be able to float effortlessly with your BC inflated. The primary method of descent is the head-first surface dive. By bending at the waist and lifting your legs to a vertical position, you can let the weight of your legs help force you below the surface. Once your fins are below the water level, 
you can kick down to a lower depth. The feet first dive can be used in confined areas. Start in a vertical position and use the force of your arms and legs to propel you below the water. Once you're underwater, tuck, roll forward, and swim to your desired depth. As you swim deeper, you may feel pressure in your ears. To relieve the pressure, you must equalize the pressure. Simply hold your nose and blow gently. If pain occurs, do not continue to descend. Instead, ascend a little and equalize again. When it comes time to ascend, there are a few safety points you should follow. As you surface, look up and extend your left hand while watching for obstructions above. Once you reach the surface, lay out and clear your snorkel. Leave your mask in place and, if you need to, inflate your vest or BC so you can float comfortably without the need to tread water. In calm water, you can simply rest while you orally inflate your vest. However, in rough water, you may need to use the bobbing method. With bobbing, you rise above and sink slightly below the surface as you inflate your vest. As you kick above the surface, inhale. As you sink, exhale into the inflator hose. Continue until you have enough air in your vest to float. Whenever you tread water in a vertical position, make sure that you're not kicking the reef or any marine life. Be aware of the extra length your fins add to your legs. When you're tired, cold, or ready to stop, it's time to exit. Use the easiest method for your environmental conditions. When diving from a boat, you may be instructed on what exit to use. If you're diving from shore, the easiest method is to let the waves carry you in. Swim beyond the surf line if necessary into waist-deep water. Stand up, remove your fins, and walk into shore. If water conditions are harsh, you may need to crawl up the shore until it's easier to stand up. Understanding the snorkeling skills and your snorkeling system is the first step to becoming a proficient scuba diver. Snorkeling gives you the chance to become familiar with the basic equipment and comfortable with the basic water skills before you begin your scuba diving training. Plus, many snorkeling skills such as fin kicks, surface swimming and entries and exits are transferable to scuba diving. The first step in scuba diving equipment assembly is preparation. Once your mask, fins, snorkel and weight system are properly adjusted, you can assemble the scuba unit itself. First, check the O-ring to make sure it's in place and neither cracked nor broken. Next, place the BC on the cylinder with the O-ring facing the back of the BC. Make sure it's at the proper height on the cylinder. Adjust the cylinder retaining band and cinch tightly. Next, lift the BC by the straps and retaining band to make sure it is fully secured. Now, attach the regulator. With the cylinder positioned in front of you, hold the primary second stage in your right hand and the first stage in your left hand and connect the yoke to the cylinder valve. This will ensure that your primary regulator hangs over your right shoulder. Tighten the yoke screw until it is snug, but not so tight that it will damage the O-ring. Then, connect the power inflator hose to the BC, making sure it's secure. Last, exhale first and then gently inhale from both second stages. It should be easy to exhale and difficult to inhale. If you can inhale air, there is a leak in the system. When you turn on the cylinder, open the valve carefully. Then continue until it is fully open. Next, check the submersible pressure gauge to make sure it's working and that your cylinder is full. Again, gently breathe off your second stage to make sure air is flowing to it. Do the same with your alternate air source. The last step is to check the power inflator to make sure it inflates and deflates without sticking. If everything is in working order, secure the unit while you dress. Now you and your buddy are ready to put your equipment on. Use the least strenuous method for putting on the scuba unit. One method is to have your buddy lift the unit onto your back while you buckle it. Or set the unit onto a support, then simply sit down and put it on. 
If the water conditions permit, you can also put the unit on once you've entered the water. Simply sit on the cylinder and then slip your arms through the BC jacket. Once you are ready to enter, do a last minute check with your buddy to make sure everything is adjusted and working properly. Your weight belt should not be covered by your BC. Your hoses shouldn't be caught or tangled and the air must be turned on. Last, put on your mask, snorkel and fins. Scuba entries are similar to snorkeling entries, but the weight of the scuba equipment makes balance more difficult. Be careful. Enter with adequate air in your BC so you can float, while holding your mask in second stage so they aren't lost when entering the water. Because the scuba diver is completely submerged in water, it's likely that some water will enter the second stage regulator or mask. This is not a problem. The water is easily cleared. Should your second stage come out of your mouth during your dive, you'll need to retrieve it and replace it. One method is to swing your right arm back while leaning on your right side, hook the hose, and then grab the mouthpiece. The other method is to reach back with your right arm until you feel the cylinder valve. Follow the hose down until you reach the mouthpiece. Once the second stage leaves your mouth, it fills with water, so you'll need to clear it of water before you inhale. The two methods for clearing the second stage are blowing and purging. Blowing is the preferred method. Just blow air through your mouthpiece and the water will vent out. With purging, you clear the second stage with air from the cylinder. Lightly press the purge valve while putting the second stage back in your mouth, being careful not to push the purge button too hard. Another potential problem is water in your mask. You can comfortably dive with some water in your mask. However, a dry airspace is nicer and easier on your eyes. The easiest way to clear your mask is to gently press on the top of your mask with one or both hands and exhale through your nose. Look up. The water will come out of the bottom of your mask. It may take more than one try to clear all the water. When assisting your buddy, let them know you are going to help before doing so. He or she may prefer to fix the problem without your help. When it comes time for your exit, the procedures will be similar to snorkeling, except that exiting with scuba will be more awkward, especially when you're tired. No matter which method you use, keep your mask in place so you can see, your snorkel or second stage in place so you can breathe, and keep enough air in your BC so you can float. This will ensure that you stay in control until you are safely out of the water. When disassembling your unit, turn the air off and make sure both second stages are purged before attempting to remove the first stage. Replace the dust cap to keep your first stage free of contaminants. Last, remove the BC and empty it of water. Equipment malfunction rarely occurs due to defect, but is usually caused by improper maintenance. Ask your SSI dealer or instructor about the SSI Equipment Service Program, which will help keep your equipment operating correctly. You should rinse your equipment in clean, fresh water as soon as possible after your dive. Sand, salt, mud and debris can damage your equipment. Your mask, fins and snorkel are easily cared for, only requiring a rinse in fresh water. Your exposure suit should also be rinsed out in fresh water with wetsuit shampoo and hung on a wetsuit hanger. Drain the BC of water, then rinse it inside and out with clean, fresh water. To rinse the inside, fill it about one-third full, then inflate. Slosh the water, making sure it gets in all areas of the BC. Drain the water by inverting the jacket and holding the inflator hose down with the oral inflator open. When rinsing your second stage mouthpiece, be careful not to press the purge button. This can allow water into the hose and cause damage to the system. You should also rinse your diving instruments to remove any salt and debris. When storing the BC, keep it in a dry, cool area hung on a BC hanger. Leave it half full of air to protect the BC and keep the insides from sticking together. When storing the regulator and console, 
smoothly wind the hoses into a zippered regulator bag. The bag will protect them and keep dust away. Hose protectors will prevent kinks that lead to weak spots in hoses. To protect your investment, for your safety, and to maintain your manufacturer's warranty, your equipment should be serviced on at least an annual basis. Talk to your SSI dealer about the SSI Equipment Service Program, which makes it easy for you to properly maintain your equipment. The foremost concern in caring for your cylinder is keeping out moisture. Store it with some air left inside and with the valve tightly closed. Have your cylinder visually inspected annually by your SSI dealer. This inspection will detect any rust, corrosion, or contaminants. Your cylinder should also be hydrostatically tested in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation and as required by law. Air stations will not fill your cylinder unless it has passed a current visual inspection and hydrostatic test. Scuba diving is an equipment intensive sport. Your comfort, safety and enjoyment underwater depends on your ability to effectively use the total diving system. Each piece serves a vital function to the diver while underwater, so you should not dive without all of the necessary equipment. From time to time, simple maintenance procedures are required while on dive excursions. In the Equipment Techniques Specialty course, you learn how to perform simple maintenance and make your investment last longer. Your equipment is your partner underwater. When you become proficient with your equipment, you will truly begin to relax and enjoy the underwater world.